Good morning, hola, muchachos and people. Um, today, I am continuing my videos about when I was finishing up my career, and I'm going back and looking at some of those uh, some of those early videos, some of the first ones I made, and uh, there's some really interesting things that were happening to me that I see today. I'm gonna check these old ones out, and let's see if we can't get a laugh or two. Consider changing your password. Did they not know I've only got like 30 something days left and they want me to change my password and it's gonna expire in five days? Are you kidding me? I'm very upset. I'm very upset. Look at these password requirements. They want me to change my password. How in the world am I ever going to remember? I'm old. I can't remember when you got you got to change passwords and remember what the look look at the requirements for these for these passwords. I want you to see what it is they want you to do. Now, if if you're a little younger, you may not recall the days when your password could be, you know, Chris. <laughs> You know, like we had no back, you know, back when all this stuff started coming in. Because remember when I started, because remember when I started teaching, we didn't have computers in the classrooms. We didn't have computers in the building, you know, when I started teaching, it, except maybe the front office might have it. And it was basically a word processor. Uh, and, and our passwords were just... It, it, cyber security was not a thing and by the time I left you know you're getting into the you know how you guys know what I'm talking about with the passwords and um, and it was really it, I just was not used to that we weren't used to that and when they started telling us you had to have all we were like oh my god what were we supposed to do and uh, you know being all sensitive and stuff like I was about to retire um, I was I was pretty wound up about this Look at that. That's like a whole, you know, eight characters long. And then it's got four requirements. Are you, what? How am I, how am I going to do that? I'm going to have to quit today. See, here's what happens with all these passwords. I have all these pieces of paper, all these pieces of paper in my drawer. And I've been collecting these for 20 years. And I have got so many passwords to so many different programs. Uh, if I lost those pieces of paper, literally, when I held up those pieces of paper, that literally had like 20 different passwords from every different, uh, you know, uh, we were always getting all these new um things that they wanted us to do and we would have to log in and we would have to create a password and there were all these it was just and it never stopped once we started getting those we just added passwords and added passwords and added passwords and they all had different requirements and um i didn't i i still did stuff written out by hand when i started teaching we wrote our test out by hand i, I didn't even type anything you know i literally wrote it out by hand and so a, a lot of the stuff that I did, I was still doing by hand. And, you know, I, if somebody had got in my office and took my passwords, I would have been in a world of hurt. I would not be able, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get into teacher's retirement. I couldn't, uh, that would be a total disaster if I lost those seven or eight pieces of paper. Um, that's why changing passwords doesn't work for me. Um, it's too much. Um, and then I would get fired because I couldn't do my job and I wouldn't get my pension. And uh, this last 45 days would be a total disaster. So I've got to do something about this password situation. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Thanks. That was something that I saw in my office the first thing when I when I got to go to work. So I was I was wound up the rest of the day, um, or as wound up as I could get. I, I don't get really wound up. But anyway, the next scene you're about to see 
yeah, you're, you're very privileged, very privileged. Because this is a picture out of the first annual of my first teaching job. And you're about to see a picture of me with my little mustache and um, when I first started teaching. And you will notice um, my hands are up here in this picture. And the reason my hands are up here is because I was buttoning up my shirt so everybody wouldn't see my chest hair. <laughs> and, and there's actually on the picture where a kid had written in my annual a little, you know, quote bubble and it says, hey kids, <laughs> so, enjoy, enjoy this picture that's coming up. Have a good time. Good morning. It is day 6,139. 31 days left to go with students. Somebody asked me to show a picture of me with my mustache. This is my first year teaching. See that guy? Ninety-nine point nine percent of you people, when I start rattling this stuff off, you're not going to have any earthly idea what any of it means. However, if you are a teacher, especially if you've been a teacher for a, a good while, um, you are going to fully understand because what I'm about to do is take you into some educational ease. Okay, I'm, I'm about to speak education language, and part of education language is um, <laughs> all these acronyms like like it is like acronym city when you go into a school everything has an acronym because we have to make all these really cool titles for all these different programs and all these different directions and and all these things that we're going to do because education is is ran by educational schools universities uh, professional organizations things like that and they love to make acronyms and make these big huge sweeping proposals to change all these things and then they'll turn around two or three years later and they'll change it completely back the opposite way um, and they want to do this then they want to do that then they want to do this and they want to do that and they're all doing all these really cool things but none of them are teaching in a school not a single one of them uh, they may have taught in a school 30 years ago but the people that are coming up with all these cool ideas don't teach. Uh, they'll bring in some teachers to kind of help them make it a little bit more friendly to teachers, but they don't teach. Uh, so here we go for the educational acronyms. Uh, maybe you can figure some of them out, but probably not. Yeah, that guy was born in the USA, learned his ABCs, took his SAT, went to UGA. Took the TCT and got a J-O-B at a middle school. And they made him the ISS instructor. But he wanted to teach the QCCs. He also had to pass the TPAI to get tenure. Then the state got sued and they dropped the TPAI. So then all he had to do was the GTOI. He went to another school. And then he was teaching the GPS. And he went to another school. And then the USA decided we needed to have NCLB so everyone could have FAPE. Then he got his MED, and he got interested in admin. He got his SPED, and he took the praxis. And he qualified as an admin so he could help his school, meet AYP. Then the Georgia BOE dropped the GTOI for the TEKS and the LEAKS, and they started teaching the CCGPS. So now he's using the SIP and the PBIS to help the ED, ESOL, and ESEP students so teachers can get, uh, get good SGPs and the school can get a good CCRPI. So now that guy has contacted the TRS so that he can R-E-T-I-R-E -E. because he's got so many passwords, he can't even remember what he's doing. Have a good Friday. Every one of those things was, was a world-shaking uh, event. I just listed all those things off. And of course now I've forgotten about most of them. But uh, every one of those was a, a very significant change in a teacher's job and in a teacher's life. And um, they just never stop. They never stop. And that was one of the things, if you're the kind of person that wants to get a job and do that job and kind of do it the same way, 
you know, like I'm going to pour concrete and I'm going to pour concrete the same way I poured concrete 20 years ago and I'm going to keep, and this is how the job is. If you're the kind of person that wants to have a job where things kind of stay the same, this education is not for you because it changes and it changes. It, the further along we get, the more it changes and the faster it changes. So anyway, that stuff was just, some of that stuff literally is the reason I'm bald today. <laughs> it, it's, some of that stuff is the reason why the average person that gets into education uh, doesn't last three years. They quit because of all of that. So uh, have a good day. And I hope you enjoy these videos when I'm going back and looking at these. Uh, these were two of my favorite, I have to say. Those two videos are probably two of my favorites of all the videos I've ever done. And nobody's ever watched them. So you guys are getting to see them. Have a good day.